Uh, my name is Ray uh, Aolu. I'm uh, the director of Gun Hand. I grew up in Canada, but I've been living in the Netherlands for about almost 20 years. Uh, my name is David Anthony van der Meijden. I started as a director of photography and since I think it's, oh, I'm now working as a director of photography for six years. And as the productions got bigger, I started my own production company four years ago. Um, which we are in right now, it's called Weldon Pictures. Since I think it's now two years, we started working on uh, Gun End. So why of all film genres did you decide to make a Western? Yeah, I, um, I have, it's my favorite genre of, of film and I, I grew up as a young kid uh, going to a cinema, uh, a, uh, I don't know how to say that, they had, where they would had they had matinees every Sunday and they showed almost exclusively really old westerns. So I was like seven, eight, nine years old. So all I was I couldn't wait every Sunday to go and see these films. And they were a lot of B westerns, a lot of spaghetti westerns, some, but particularly older westerns. And so I guess I just developed a love for the genre, and I feel very much at home in that in that world and uh, something I always wanted to do. The movie's about um, a one of the things that it's about. It's about the a gunfighter or an ex gun for hire who's uh, uh, dealing with uh, with aging. Uh, I think a lot of films don't deal. You know, they, there's this kind of this heroism, and then the guy rides off in the sunset, and then you don't really know what happens to somebody like that. So um, yes, there's elements of uh, that you find in other westerns. But uh, we focus a little bit more on, okay, the character's a little bit more mature. Um, and uh, it's not so black and white, you know, with good guys, bad guys. It's a little bit of a gray area. And I will leave it up to the audience to decide what... Uh, so I, I, I'm not giving you any spoilers. Yeah. So actually, Gun End is actually a story where most Westerns end, Gun End begins. Yeah. When the... Hero oh, rides yes, off yes. into yeah. the sunset, our story begins. Yeah. Your synopsis contains a lot of elements that are very typical for a Western. So how original is your movie? Um, I, I, I think uh, it's interesting to ask the question, you know, uh, how original do you want to make a Western? Uh, when I look at examples of people say, okay, let's make a vampire Western. Let's make an, a Western with aliens. Let's make a Western, you know, uh, when I sort of analyze the westerns in the last 20 years as we've been trying to kind of reinvent the the genre a little bit which westerns have done the best have been the best uh, received yeah. have been, that have been yeah, more highly acclaimed or, or, or received the best that were there were westerns that didn't really go off the sorry that didn't go off the uh the uh the path of how, what the genre really encapsulates which is these types of situations where uh, that's what America was like I mean that that's what the West was like and so you know introducing elements like aliens or, or all that stuff uh, I don't know if that's the way to go so uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to be telling a story it's gonna be a traditional Western yeah like it has all the Western elements but we're going to put it in a, a new jacket yeah. a little bit modern so no long duster coats not too many at least <laughs> one of my favorite westerns is open range i also like one of the more recent films uh, django unchained which is more of a modern western but i, I really liked it i wasn't i wasn't really big of a fan of his latest film hateful eight, eight. eight. yeah <laughs> um well hateful yeah. kind of, hateful eight is an example where i think okay to me it's more like a like a a, a, a murder mystery like a Hercule Poirot uh, kind of thing set, you know, in a in a hotel or a, or Miss Marple, I think her name is, like these detectives kind of thing. But it's set in 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 the West. So that's that's an example where you say, okay, we're kind of you know we're gonna mash up the the Western and make try to make something different. And whereas Django was much more traditional as far as the themes like revenge, you know, uh, that's a great Western theme, you know, revenge. I mean, it's just clear you know and sometimes when you go off that track the film kind of becomes I mean it could be good but I sometimes wonder if you should do that you know so yeah. I like Django too 
Yeah, and uh, which one was the with um, Russell Crowe? I forgot it. Was it? Oh, uh, Three Ten to Yuma. Yeah, I also really like uh, Three Ten to Yuma. Yeah, which is like a remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's good. Which is also an example of where they just kind of they just stuck to. Yeah. I don't really like the more of the spoof westerns like uh, Cowboy vs. Aliens and westerns that contain zombies. Uh, it's not really yeah. my thing. No. Or the Seth MacFarlane movie. Oh, yes. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't get yeah. me started. A hundred way, a thousand way, a hundred ways, a hundred ways, a million ways to a die in the West. To die in the West. Yeah. Jesus, that's yeah. so bad. Well, that's tough. I mean, when people, when people, you, know, you tell people you're making a, a low budget Western. Yeah. Right away, they start thinking, okay, this is going to be, it's going to be funny, you know, <laughs> because it's the easy way out. It's easy. It's the easy way out when you don't have a lot of money to say, okay, well, you know, then we're just going to kind of spoof everything. Yeah. And that's the biggest challenge for us is that, you know, we, <laughs> is we want, we take it seriously. And, you know, uh, hopefully uh, in the end, people will be like, oh, okay. Hopefully it shows. Yeah. yeah. You describe this movie as a mash pot Western, very Dutch, of course. But is this the first mash pot Western? Uh, I, I don't know of any others, except for, as we speak, um, uh, a Dutch director, Martin Kohlhove, is working on a Western. Uh, Brimstone. It's called Brimstone, um, which I know he's also started working on, you know, three, four years ago, writing it, the script and uh, trying to get funding and all that stuff. So uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that. The race is on. You know, is it going to be? Are we ever? Because he's going to win the race because his film's going to be out before our film's going to be out, and uh, so I don't know if we can lay claim to the fact that we're going to have the first Mashpot Western. <laughs> I don't also don't know if you can call his film a Mashpot Western, a stumpled Western. I don't know because he's shot it maybe uh, you know in, in in other countries and uh, maybe it's not so European. I think that's one of the things that you know is going to set hopefully our film apart, but. Uh, so I, I can't, I, I don't know, it's a, it might not be the first Mashpot Western, but it's going to be one of the first. In uh, Italian Westerns, most of the time they have um, those little side characters who are really, really over the top. Uh, they are really funny or they have a handicap and it's, it's always a yeah. bit more over the top. Yeah, they're and almost, almost clown-esque. Yeah, almost, and I think yeah. our Western, uh, the Dutch Western, <laughs> Is more uh, of a serious type. It's more gritty, a bit more violent, a bit more serious. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to set us apart. Yeah, maybe more rooted in in a little more realism than yeah, uh, yeah. And not not like the well, of course there's going to be action, but not like the over the top, uh, too much swinging with the guns and like really over the top, like the new Max Ma Magnificent Seven. That's a really Hollywood typish Western, very over the top. So perhaps you can compare it more to Unforgiven. Yeah, definitely. That's a pretty good comparison. Definitely, yeah. 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 Or like a uh, open range, or it's more like a um, uh, westerns that take place in a more deserted place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's also. I mean, that's the cool thing about westerns. I mean, uh, you could. You, there's a number of settings you can, you can have. But there's always this sort of the clash between civilization being brought to, a, you know, an open, uh, barren place. But the, our focus is more on the people who are living, sort of out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, what that does to the, to the characters, to their lives, and stuff like that. Because we don't have the money right now, we have to depend on a lot of very awesome people that really helped us. So we shot about seven or eight days right now in a, in a time frame of... Over a year. Yeah, over a year. Yeah. Every few months we, we get enough people together. We have the, the raise the, the money to, yeah. to have another shooting day to get the stuff and, and the locations and stuff. So that's why the whole... The whole thing drags on for about a year and a half. Yeah. Too. And then there's a the whole, the writing and, and that's been going on also. So I think it's altogether, so me personally, I've been working on it for over three years. Yeah. Yeah. Going on four years. And Ray and I met like two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. So we clicked and yeah, he told me about his project. He did some short films. I make a lot of uh, commercials, corporate movies and... Uh, I always wanted to make movies, so this is like my first big step in the feature film uh, industry, which is uh, going to be very exciting. Over three years, it may become the boyhood of Westerns. <laughs>
Wow, that's like, well, it was 12 years, right? Yeah, that's pretty insane. I haven't uh, seen it. Getting there. Yeah. yeah. Still, still working on it. Well, <laughs> most movies have like a pre-production of two years or even more, like 10. Some, they, uh, them, some well, do yeah, like some 10 years sure, over a script. Sure, I mean, sure. it's always, yeah. there's also, always something in development. The reason why we are going to do a crowdfunding campaign is mostly because we don't have a track record in future films. Uh, like the big studios, you really need a track record to... Um, yeah, how do you say that? You really need a track record to knock on somebody's door and ask for money, uh, in simple words. So we're going to do it, um, yeah, in a more, how do you say it, in a more indie way. And also to have more control, to, more have, to have more creative control about the project. Yeah. Because most of the times, big studios, they really want to uh, put their boot on the project and really make it their own which I can understand because it needs to make a profit. Um, but if the crowdfunding is in but if the crowdfunding is successful, we're going to we're going to try some uh, more traditional ways of funding yeah. which the, we are in the working end, on yeah. right in now. In the end probably what what will happen is uh, hopefully that it'll be a, a, a combination of both. Yeah. Is that, you know, some of it we'll, we'll be able to raise with crowdfunding and uh, Maybe part, you know, when you approach uh, investors or, or, or a studio and you say, you know, we already have some of our own money yeah. that we can put in, uh, you know, we only need this much to get the film made. It's a different, uh, different position that you're in than just holding out your hand and yeah. saying, uh, it's always help easier us. if you got a little budget of your own yeah. that you already funded, because it also shows that people are interest, interested in yeah. the project. So th yeah. that's always a good sign. Yeah. Are you going to do other movies together? Well, let's uh, first see how this uh, this one happens. No, uh, I want to. Uh, I think we have a good bond. Uh, well, David has a uh, just a, like I have this this uh, sort of pet project, which is what this is something I've wanted to do yeah. for a long time. He also has a pet project, which is more fantasy uh, oriented. Yeah. Cut to the uh, <laughs> more fantasy oriented, and so uh, already you know it's it's funny while we're working on this and we're looking at locations and stuff. I yeah. I I. Sometimes I'll, I'll run into something and I'll say, hey, this might be cool for David's film. Yeah. So, you know, it's not unthinkable if, uh, if it goes well that we'll do something together. I hope so. I hope so. Have you already thought of rewards for people who support your project, like uh, perks? Yeah, I think yeah we have lots of, lots of cool perks. One of the challenges with the film is, uh, um, get, is that we, how do we get people uh, in the film? Uh, if you have a, a, just a restaurant scene in a modern film, it's easy to get people uh, to play the waiter or to do something. In a Western, it's a little bit tougher, uh, particularly for shooting in the desert somewhere. Uh, but we have some cool ideas. For instance, uh, one of the ideas we have is that people can get uh, wanted posters, you know, so that they're in the film and they're obviously in, in the shot, you know, because somebody's talking about somebody and then beside the wanted poster of one of the main characters, you know, you can see them and their name and stuff. Uh, we also thought about, you know, in a saloon, uh, maybe some of the bottles that are there, you know, that, that somebody has a, has a, a whiskey brand name. of their own. Yeah. We have some t-shirt designs and we are also thinking of um, some cigar boxes that are, that are going to in the, that are going to be in the movie. Yeah. Um, we're also thinking of giving away one of the props, one of the guns that we're going to use yeah. in the movie. So yeah, well, we've not, got plenty of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we got so so we can the the challenge is I think we got some good uh, inventive ideas on how to personalize things for people, uh, and that they also get get a copy of that you know so they'll they'll have a bottle yeah. and they'll have a poster and they'll have a, you know they'll have they'll get props and things like that so and there also will be some exclusive screenings so that uh, some people are going to uh, see some uh, cut cut scenes from the from the actual film and they also. Um, can give us yeah. some feedback. Yeah, they'll be part of a test audience. Yeah. We're going to also do some so tests. That's also uh, test one of the perks. Which is pretty unique. A lot of films don't do that. We'll actually have them fill out a yeah. form and say, okay, you know, what did you think of this? What did you think of that? And of course, we also have some uh, producer credits. And well, also in a more lower range of the credits, you can get credited on the end, end credits of the film. And yeah. so plenty. <laughs> If you're looking for Mexicans, you know to give a ring. <laughs> <laughs> I might take you up on that. Yeah. The actors from the trailer, where did you find them? Well, you found well, them, right? Yeah, I found uh, most of them I, I found uh, through platforms, through internet, through, through platforms where uh, actors, you know, they, they put their resume on there and you can see photographs or you can see uh, um, 
Whew, it's getting late. Uh, show <laughs> reels. Uh, you can see photographs, show reels of the actors. And uh, then, so I just go through all those places and, and, uh, and a lot on YouTube. I mean, there's a lot of people who put their stuff on YouTube, a lot of unknown un unknowns. And um, just go, first of all, you go for a look. And that's the most important thing. People have to have a, a certain look. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times uh, it was tough to find people because uh, the actors nowadays, are, they're not very physical. They don't have a real physical presence. Uh, no offense, but you know, if you're sitting and playing video games all day or sitting behind a computer, your, your, your body develops in a different way than somebody who has to ride horses yeah. or uh, you know, has a job of hunting down outlaws. And, you know, it, 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 you, there's, there has to be a physical type of, of stature. So there was a lot of people that were interested in doing it. We needed and, some more manly men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We needed some uh, some real real men, and also the women have to have a, a certain uh, yeah unique look. But it's, yeah. that's always something you look for. So it's a bit people who the, to... people who look like they've 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 really lived uh, lived a, a, a you know a, a tough life. Uh, they are going to be in the movie, uh, but we're not sure which parts they are going to play. Uh, yeah. yeah, but they will be in the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's sort of the the deal that we have with them. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't know if we if we're able to cast for the leads, if we're able to cast people with, yeah. uh, you know, with a bigger name, then they 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 understand how that works. Yeah, because most the the biggest part of the cast is going to be uh, English American actors, well, native English people, and I think like 20 percent is going to be Dutch. Uh, one of the uh, one of the characters in the film is uh, is has, is a, is an immigrant, you know, who's just recently come over to the states, and uh, you know, depending on who plays that, I mean, that could be she could be a French, she could be Dutch, she could be Swedish, you know, Scandinavian, whatever. So that's uh, that's a way of, of of dealing with that. But I, we'd like to have most of the character. We'd like the movie to feel authentic. authentic yeah. yeah. When do you think your movie will be ready? More questions. I think probably the end of. To 2018, yeah, you know, maybe the fall of 2018, maybe a little bit earlier. Depends on. Uh, I think that's that's be to be realistic. It also yeah. really depends on the budget. Yeah, that's also a big question because if we are if we're going to get a, a bigger budget, we can do a little bit more. Yeah. So it's going it's going to take us a little well longer or shorter. It yeah. got more manpower yeah. and indie films. Sometimes it means that that you know maybe you have enough budget to shoot everything. But then you don't have enough money to do the post production in the right way. So then maybe you have to look for some more funds, and that also takes an, an, you know a few months, or uh, or you have to do that in a, in, a, in a way that's very time consuming to save money. Uh, so so the you know the whole process of principal photography, editing, and then the post production and music, which is an important element. Uh, you know, so it's difficult to say. And you just mentioned the score. Have you got any composer in mind? Yeah, we do have a composer a composer in mind. Yeah, uh, we also have we well we have a composer right now for the trailer, and well we hope that he's going to work with us also on the feature. Yeah. So the the trailer that we're gonna launch when we do the crowdfunding campaign, and also all the some of the video stuff that we'll do for the crowdfunding campaign will have original music on it. Which is done by the composer, yeah. uh, by a composer, and hopefully, if uh, you know, he's got a tough job because <laughs> you, as a Western fan, know how important music can be. You know, yeah. I think if you look at uh, Sergio Leone's films, if you think, if you think what those films would be like without that music, well, that's also an important note because we're not go we're not trying to make a Sergio Leone no. film, no. so it's not going to have this. Well, it's going to have great music. It's not going to be a rip-off of uh, any of Martijn de Man is composing our trailer and hopefully he's going to work with us on the whole feature. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we're going to shoot in Almeria. That's in a famous part of Spain where lots of classics are made. Uh, we're going to shoot a part in Germany and in the Netherlands. So it's going to be I can, it, the idea is yeah. that most of the exteriors will be shot outside of the Netherlands, and then uh, at the end for the, some of the interiors, yeah. we'll be able to build a couple of sets here in the Netherlands, and then shoot uh, hopefully most of the interiors here in, yeah. in Holland. And a lot of the stuff, um, depending again, this all depends on the budget. A lot of the stuff that we we get uh, for the for the props and stuff, some of it we we get from uh, from eBay and Markplatz. 
to uh, because you can pretty much find anything you, you want if you really look. Uh, so you know you have to kind of say, okay, does all that stuff have to be made, or do you have to take all that stuff to, to Spain, or you know sometimes it's much easier to just to say we build a set here and, and we have it all here. Plus, if we need to do some reshooting, you know, we need to do pickups. It's much easier, to, you know, to, to have the stuff here to do it all here. So, I think it's a shame that the modern audience uh, associates the Western, you know, with with a, a bygone kind of age. I think uh, the the universe, uh, just like the Lord of the Rings has a, has a universe, and there's these parameters, and there's these sort of these rules. I think that that also you also have that in, in the Western genre. Uh, about you know these set types of situations, and I think you can use those settings to tell any kind of story, uh, any kind of theme, uh, whatever you want to tell. I think you can tell it in a Western setting, and I think you you have an exciting, uh, uh, particularly a visually exciting way of telling the, any story you want. So I hope uh, that we don't have to have again. You don't have to have vampire westerns and zombie westerns. To, to be able to tell a, a good story, you know, for instance, immigration, immigrants is a, is a, it's, it's really you know a huge topic right now. I mean, Western would be a great is a great way to 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 tackle that and to say, okay, well, let's look at that. You know, what how how does that work? You know, what happens to people when people from outside come in there? What does that do to a community or expectations? Uh, you know, biases, all that stuff. So yeah, you know, what is strange? You don't really see that topic. Um, you don't really see the topic in westerns. I can't recall more recent westerns that cover immigration a lot. It's more. It's always like uh, you have a bad guy and a good guy, and you're, you're gonna fight at the end. So, are you planning to use like the old west equivalent of Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I definitely think th those people existed. Uh, you know uh, that. Uh, And you already mentioned that. I, I think the, the West was a really interesting place. And I think it was there was a lot more, uh, you know, people who just got off a boat uh, going out West. Uh, the people who had a nice cushy job in the, in the, in the East and the cities, they didn't have any reason to, to go out there. So what type of people moved out West? I mean, it was people looking to make a new start, just like people who are coming from Syria, from all types of places uh, coming to Europe. You know, yeah. So uh, I'm sure there was some Donald Trump-like people then as there as there are now you know back in those days you really could go to a to a uh, little plane of land and just stick your uh, flag in it and it's yours yeah. yeah yeah i think a good western i think you need uh you need two things i think you need to use the 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 land the landscape uh and the the country that uh, as a, almost as a character i think When westerns veer off that and they start, you know, it's more of a western about a town uh, in the west. Then you start to get things that you could also set, you know, in 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 the city or in a neighborhood in a big city, which is fine. But then I think it's kind of a shame. I don't think, that the, you know, you're losing the the great, the best part of a western, which is the fact that it's out there in the in the middle of nowhere and the land has to be tamed and the land is land is like a character in the film so i think that's important and as far as the again the themes i think uh, uh i think there's a you know six seven themes that you see recurring in westerns and i think i don't I, to me there's nothing wrong with uh taking those themes and and trying to take a slightly different angle you know but but i don't think you should get away from that too much i think that's what makes a western uh you know good so you need vast landscape guns horses <laughs> It was just a little joke. Living out in where there's no law, there's no law and order. You can't just call the police. Uh, the, you know uh, that obviously that does something. It well, brings you did up have marshals. Sure, but well, not everywhere. Uh, but yeah, but it's going to take. In some cases, it'll take days or weeks yeah. for them to get there. You know, so uh, the whole gun issue is is interesting. You know, uh, the whole gun culture. If you if you know your westerns, if you know your American history. You look a little bit differently at the whole gun culture. You understand why, uh, you know, people had to do something to defend themselves. Um, if they still need to do that, uh, you can ask that question. But I, I totally understand. I mean, I'm not a big uh, gun uh, person, but I do understand that how that how that developed. You know, 
because of all the stuff I've, I've, oh. I've read about the American West and uh, the whole colonization of Nowadays, it's, uh, it's a bit outdated. It's going to be a traditional Western, but in a more modern way. If you seen the the if you were, if you have seen the teaser, I take a lot of inspiration from films as uh, such as The Revenant, Children of Man. Well, um, one of the thing I, things I like about David's style, which I think is exciting for me to, to work with him, is that he has a way of you uh, you're putting the audience uh, more in in the shot in the film instead of sort of objectively looking at it from from a distance so he knows a lot more about what lenses uh, you have to use for that yeah but um as far as uh, the use of the camera it's uh, it's something yeah, that we're gonna, that we're comes gonna naturally use, yeah we're gonna use a lot of active camera movement i think of um the, the actual close-up the actual close-up that we're gonna film most classical westerns they use a lot of extreme close-ups Especially Sergio Leone's movie, I think almost well fifty percent of the whole movie is just ex extreme close up, uh, extreme close ups of eyes. Westerns, uh, you have a lot of vast landscape landscapes that I really want to capture. So if we're going to if we're going to shoot a close up, I'm going to shoot it very wide, so you can see the whole scenery instead of just using a uh, one hundred millimeter lens. Just shoot yeah. him in his yeah. eyes so i think that's gonna set up set us apart from the rest of the westerns it's going to be a traditional western but in a modern in a modern in a more modern way can i take your close-up <laughs> oh it's doing here <laughs> with a whip uh, whip sound effect that must be actually i think it's going to be always like that you should have an interview also in english but anyway are you doing an extra close-up yeah.